Hello, welcome to this MagiCAD for Revit demonstration video. Today we're going to be looking at the new electrical calculation feature included with MagiCAD for Revit 2019 update release 1. MagiCAD have been working in cooperation with Schneider Electric to integrate Schneider's EcoDial calculation engine into MagiCAD for Revit. Uh, so the tool is currently designed to take early stage information from your Revit model uh, in conjunction with various uh, MagiCAD and Revit tools to calculate and size uh, your main distribution network, uh, including your circuit breakers, submain cables and switchboards. The calculation engine is capable of calculating short circuit current, cable sizes, fault drop, and will also automatically size and select appropriate protected devices for each distribution circuit. So what we can see here is uh, an outline of our network that we wish to calculate. Uh, so this calculation engine, as we can see here, is going to calculate the fault drop, the cable size and the protected device. It's also going to calculate the short circuit current for these circuits as well. So what this looks like in our model is like so. Here we've got uh, SB 10.1, as we saw on the schematic. And then connected to that is a number of circuits. And we've also got SB 10.11 uh, connected there. So uh, we're not going to be sizing the final circuit cables at this stage. Uh, what we'll be doing is sizing the submain that's feeding SB 10.11. And we'll also size the submain that is feeding this SB 10.1 as well, along with the other uh, distribution boards within this project. So using the uh, tools uh, which come with MagiCAD, um, what we've done prior to this is we've set up uh, a number of um, spaces using the link spaces to switchboard feature. And we've connected those spaces with early stage watts per meter squared load densities and we've connected those spaces to the switchboard uh, at that point we can see here the switchboard now has uh, this mc estimated load value here uh, and it's then uh, reporting we've got just over 100 kilowatts there um, for this switchboard additionally to that we also have these cable packets, which trace the route uh, of the of each circuit back. Um, and if I have a look at the circuit that this board is connected to, I can see in here, we have a supply cable length of just shy of 30 meters. So this supply cable length uh, basically runs through uh, this cable packet uh, back to its parent device which is how the overall cable length is calculated. So now we'll take a look at the electrical calculation dialog. And we can see in this dialog, we have our network here. So we can see SB 10.1 and SB 10.11 here. Uh, we can see that this is very similar in its uh, appearance to the system browser and uh, the engine will pick up the entire network based on the uh, Revit circuits that are entered into the model. Here we have the settings dialog uh, in which you can input various parameters which will affect the uh, results of the calculations throughout. So uh, if you know uh, what these uh, conditions are going to be, then obviously you can set those conditions for your project and your calculations will then be produced based on these values. So here we can see SB 10.1 as we looked at earlier. And we can see here that it's brought in the figure for the estimated load, just over 100 kilowatts. And we also have uh, various other pieces of information in here which help us to perform the calculations as required. Here in the cable section you'll also notice we've got the supply cable length at 29 meters which again is derived from the parameters in the model based on the results from the cable packet tool so all of these parameters are brought in automatically however if we go to our main 
source here and look at the source uh, parameter. Uh, these figures you will have to input manually. Uh, I have filled these in already, uh, but this is the information you would receive from your supplier detailing the supply characteristics. So from here, we can see that uh, you can detail this from an LV source. So this would be if your uh, supplier is providing you the power from a transformer. Uh, if you've got a, a medium voltage source, then you can detail your medium voltage source and your transformer details in here as well. And likewise, if you're using a generator, uh, then you can input the information as per your uh, generator. For this project, we're using an LV source. So I'll select this and as mentioned, I've already detailed those parameters. So from here, we can run our calculation. And if I press calculate, this will now run through uh, the calculation and input all of the data required. So here we can see the values calculated uh, for the short circuit current. Uh, these are shown in a new value column, which remains part of the calculation until you update this into your project. So to move these over to this column here and also push them through into your actual Revit project, you need to click the update button here. But first I'm gonna go through and check some of the other features. So here in SP 10.1, I can see again, I've got my maximum and minimum short circuit currents calculated here, but also I have the protective device uh, selected. So the calculation engine has uh, gone through the network and uh, run uh, various checks to uh, check discrimination and to check short circuit current, fault drop, etc., and calculated that this particular circuit breaker uh, selected from the Schneider product range will work with uh, my installation. So this information can be combined along with the uh, cable data. Uh, so here I can see we've brought in the, the supply cable length from the model, uh, and we've also got a, a selection of uh, the type of cable that we wouldn't wish to use. And then we can see here it's selected a 50 mil squared cable to provide the power to this circuit and then a 25 mil squared separate uh, copper conductor uh, for the earth. So here we can see the protective device that the calculation engine has selected for this particular circuit. And underneath here, we have our results. Now we do have some warnings here about discrimination problems, but this is due to uh, the method that's been used uh, to calculate this. Uh, essentially, we have one uh, final load on each distribution board and the protective device for that load will conflict with the protective devices protecting the circuit. However, we're not interested at this point in time in these particular uh, circuit breakers because ultimately that will be broken down into separate individual loads. Uh, so the uh, sizes that we're interested in are the sizes of the breakers that are supplying power to the distribution board. So uh, with this, we can also see here that we have um, a CSA of a cable, uh, which has been increased from six mil to 16 mil to comply with volt drop in the circuit. So if I click on the show button here, it will take me directly to the switchboard where this change has been made. And I can review that information here um, just to see, first of all, I've got my volt drop here and resulting from that, it's changed the cable size to conform to my max volt drop settings. And then it's showing me the actual volt drop here in this dialog. If you wish to change any of this information, you can actually edit these values uh, directly. Um, as long as it has a box here, you can actually input uh, whichever uh, values you see necessary. 
You can also lock cable sizes. So if you want to perform a calculation with a particular cable size, uh, you can actually lock that cable size in and then run the calculation again. Uh, and it will give you results based on that criteria. Uh, also, if we wish to change any of the information for the protective devices, once we've updated this information to the model, we can then export this information to uh, EcoDial. So exporting this information is basically a case of setting a file name and then saving that file to your hard drive, at which point you can then open that in EcoDial and review the information that's been exported. So to view this in EcoDial, you just simply open the project in EcoDial. You can see it's, it's brought in the network as detailed. We can see this is SB 10.1 here. This is SB 10.11 here. And then if you wish to change or review any of the information from that calculation, then you can simply select the areas you want to see and then see the properties for those devices. And likewise, you can then go through, check your discrimination and make any changes that you feel necessary to any of the protected devices or cables in your network. So once the information has been uh, updated in your calculation engine, uh, you can come back to any of the uh, circuits and see that the parameters have been changed. So here I can see all the protected device information and even the uh, cable size information uh, that was calculated in the calculation engine. Additionally, I can also see in the actual uh, distribution board here, the results of the short circuit calculation. Because the calculation engine exports all of this information into various parameters, you can reflect that information on your main riser diagram by using the MagiCAD schematics module and linking the objects together. That completes the overview of this tool. If you wish to find out more information, please visit our website or contact a member of the sales team who will be happy to discuss this with you. Thanks for watching.